you know, like a real champion. And he did it, so it was awesome. I'm just so impressed with the emotion right now. And when, when we are blessed with the opportunity to come back to the same place every, every single year, and yeah. there's so much reverence and so much history and so much tradition, and it's the ultimate accomplishment in the sport. Sure. You it can't is. help but feel differently. But not everybody's moved like you are right now. Yeah, it was, you know, people talk about the, um, you know, the things that went on being, you know, John obviously being from Spain, um, the Spanish history at Augusta, um, you know, April 9th, I was wearing number 49, Seve's birthday, all these kind of stars align. So, you know, when you think about that, sometimes, yeah, I don't know, just like it was meant to be. I mean, it's wonderful. And I know that you guys have the opportunity to keep your caddy suit. Yeah. Yep. Where is yours? It's hanging in my closet. <laughs> I. Uh, it's pretty cool. They make you kind of um, request it or, or you know um, write a letter. Um, What'd you then, write? You know, I don't think I did. I uh, I just asked them, and these guys are great. And um, they sent. You know, it came in a um, came in a nice, really cool box and nice letter from these guys and uh, from the chairman. Um, nice letter and then a really cool kind of collage picture with some of the special moments of the week on it of John and I so pretty cool every single thing yeah. you say you get yeah. teary it's, uh, yeah it's uh, I knew this was gonna be emotional you know I try you try preparing yourself for it but um, yeah how do you even begin to encapsulate when you get here what you feel I can't. Even when you were just saying that, I was thinking in my head, I can't believe that I'm even considered a part of the Masters, right? Like, how did how did this happen? It always feels surreal. Every time you get to walk on these grounds and you realize that you get to be a part of it, um, it never gets old. And your expectations for yourself to uphold the incredible traditions that make the Masters what it is and make Augusta National what it is. It just feels like such a responsibility to maintain what makes everything about this so special. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually hard to put into words. You, you feel so much gratitude. I'm consistently in awe and I am consistently scared that I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> I just hope that I don't. <laughs> you're not gonna mess it up. Uh, you're a consummate professional, a pro's pro. You've uh, personally lived some amazing moments here. I, I've worn her out, you guys, with how impressed I was in 2020 when Dustin Johnson won his green jacket and Amanda had the patience, that's the word, the patience to let the moment breathe and let Dustin have that moment of emotion that we never see from that guy. Yeah. And it was just a brilliant job by you. But I wonder if you have a personal favorite moment here. Mm, I have... So one personal and one, I, I would say Dustin Johnson is, is probably my most memorable. Um, I guess a couple. I would say the most memorable one, simply because Sean McManus is retiring this year, and, and he and I, he's been so wonderful to me, right? My life as it is does not exist without him believing in me and, and giving me the chance that he did, so I'm forever grateful to him. And we were just sitting at dinner actually at Pebble Beach earlier this year, and he said, do you remember that phone call? when I got to call you and tell you that you were going to be a part of our master's team. <laughs> and what did he say? Uh, he called me and I was at home with my parents. I think it was around Thanksgiving, actually. And that's the only reason why I would have been home around the holidays. And he said, Amanda, this is Sean McManus. And obviously I was new at CBS. I was like, well, there it goes. Had a, <laughs> I guess <laughs> I made nice it. Ride. Yeah, it didn't last as long as I thought it would, <laughs> but great. And I was like, hello, Mr. McManus. What did I do? And he was like, no, this is a good phone call. He said, I just want to let you know um, that we are so happy to welcome you onto our golf on CBS team during the week of the Masters. And uh, I hung up the phone. I immediately started crying, <laughs> told my mom and my dad. They started crying. Um, my dad passed away not, not long after that. Um, and that was just one of those. There was no prouder moment in my life than being able to share that with them. I'm just going to make me emotional now. Um, but, yeah, I think when I come back here, I think about how you get 
nothing really means as much, I think, if you're a sports fan than being in this week and getting to share that with with him in that moment was really great. <laughs> so I'm reasonably. Well, something good just happened. Well, I think it was. <laughs> I think they just said it. They just said it was my final Masters, and uh, the crowd is going, "Yes, uh, sir." Yes. But, oh, well played. Sorry, well it just played. sat there, Marty. Well played. I right there on the tee. I, I can't, couldn't ignore it. I love this place. I do too. I mean, it's just so special. Uh, well, right here. I mean, on this tower back here, you sit here, and I can see third shots here. I can see the tee shots at, at six. I can look down and see the the tee shots at seventeen. It is a magical place. To and sit it's here. been your home. Yeah. For all these years. 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. It just feels yeah. magical. It's, what is it? They're, they're, they're playing practice rounds behind yeah. it. And somebody is doing really well right now. Uh -huh. Tony Finau. Tony, is it Tony? Tony's trying to skip that thing oh, across. Oh, yeah. I oh, you got a good one. You got a good one. Oh! That's great, Marty. Yet you are also inextricably linked with Tiger for the rest of time because of 2005 on the 16th. I kind of remember that. I hope so. I it's the greatest, it's the greatest golf shot ever. Well, in my view it is. This was at Augusta for crying <laughs> yes. out loud. Watching uh, the Masters on Sunday with my father was just a, a household tradition. You know, every Sunday we sat in his room, I sat on his bed and we just watched the Masters, you know, and uh, it's amazing for all of those years that I watched it on TV and how much I thought I understood what Augusta looked like when you get down here. It's like, oh. I mean, it's just a whole different Whole thing. different ball it's game. The greenest green you've ever seen. Like, what it's, shade of green is this? It's the most, and, and you, you noted the attention to detail. Everything is perfection. Yeah. I looked at a, a blade of grass that was leaning over a little too hard and it stood up, stood back in place. Yeah, yeah you had to kind of <laughs> poke it over just a little bit. I find it interesting that you use the terminology, he wants to learn how to play the Masters. I was walking the second hole for ESPN with Tony Finau a couple days back, and he explained to me that when he first came to Augusta in 2018, he wasn't focused on how to play Augusta because he thought, well, all right, I have that shot already in my bag. I don't know that I need to specifically focus on it for the intricacies of playing here. But as he's progressed, he's played, like started to prepare to play Augusta. Describe what that means exactly. I'll give you a great example of it. Uh, Victor Hovland today on 14. Whole location's right over that back hump on 14. 14 is my favorite green at Augusta National. I'm obsessed with it. I mean, I come out, it's one of my first places I go when I get here. And it was over the hump, and he had a great tee shot and had a wedge in. And he hits a wedge, and he got cute with it, and it lands on top of the hill. It's probably eight feet, but it was too short. It rolls back down. So a Tiger Woods, a veteran of this place, somebody that obviously understands the golf course, hits that pitch shot six, seven feet by and tries to make par, and if they make five, whatever. Victor, who has played very solid at Augusta National over the years, is trying to make the pitch shot. Hits it to about two feet, but you can't hit it to two feet short of the hole. Comes back down to his feet. Now he almost makes the next one for par and makes a bogey. But those are those little moments. And we had Nick Dunlap this morning watching him play a little bit as, an, as a, as a first-timer here at Augusta. And you just see little moments. Gas in a 10-footer past the hole when it's down grain and a little downhill. And you have four feet coming back. Now you might make that 95% of the time, but you're inevitably going to miss those. And so there's those little moments. And then to go to Tiger for a moment, think about 10, 11, 12. Bunker shot at 10. Really, really hard shot. He hits it five feet below the hole, has up the hill, makes it no big deal. 11, he hits it. The second shot has long way in, hits it on the right side, comes down to that slope. He hits that really sexy pitch shot and almost makes it, right? Master class. And then 12 is the hardest of the bunch. He's in the pine straw. He takes out whatever, a six iron, and bumps it into the hill and gets it to eight feet and makes that for par. A player that doesn't understand this golf course probably plays those three holes two over and Tiger plays them even. So there's a big difference in just understanding not just where to miss it, but where's the best place to make a putt from. And I feel like Tiger did that exceptionally well today. And obviously, Scotty has been just the king of that over the last few years. What a tremendous performance by him. And 
and to earn your way into the Masters with a, a buzzer beater victory. I know, and it was really cool, Ryan. I don't know if you uh, if you heard this, but he did an interview earlier in the week at the Valero where somebody asked him about the drive, pip, and putt because we all know he's the first person to play in the drive, pip, and putt and then qualify for the Masters, which is which is so cool. And I'm sure we'll be seeing that more and more as as uh, as the years go on. But they watching asked, those young kids, I mean, it's remarkable. Oh my god! There's going to be a lot of those young people there, in the Masters. Uh, someday. There was a young girl that I think she drove it like almost 270, and I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> I need to get in the gym. <laughs> That's crazy. But they, but um, I think the interviewer asked um, Akshay about the drive trip and putt, and he said it's going to be so cool to drive John Magnolia Lane this year. I mean, next year or whenever it happens. <laughs> it was just like a little insight into like, wow, does you know, just subconsciously, does, did he have that belief? And so when you when you try to explain what coming here is like to someone who never has. What do you say? I think it, the cliche is it's so much hillier than people expect. Well, it's, a, it's an accurate statement. It is, because again, you watch it on TV for all those years. You know, I started, I started golf in 1997, and it's no coincidence that in 1997, Tiger Woods won the Masters, and that's really what got me into golf. I wasn't really super interested in golf at that time. And watching the Masters year on year in that whole journey, it feel like you know every single hole. I feel like I know every single hole in this golf course without coming here. Um, and then when you, once you arrive, I was lucky enough to come in 2018, my first trip here, and just a bit, you're in, you're in awe, and it's great today. We've just arrived today, and you can see who, who's maybe here for the first time. Like the jaws are down to the ground, they're taking it all in. They come to Amen Corner because again, they might have watched this on TV for 20, 30, 40 years, and bang, they're now here on the property on the grounds. Man, I don't, for me, my boys are just starting to get to the age where we can sit down and watch sports together, and so. They know Johnny Rombo and that we've filmed videos together and that we kind of hang out. And so to watch him win it last year with my boys, like actually dialed in, paying attention was pretty special. And, and getting to do that with them was awesome. Garrett? Yeah, I mean, I said watching Tiger win it in 2019 has got to be got to be up there. But I just eaten a barbecue sandwich, really. I mean, just special. Pretty just special every, every year. I got to say, throw in a Nerf Vortex on 11. That's pretty good. Okay, somebody, that's it. Oh, you guys have a nice day. We're, we're done here. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, it's tough to improve on. Just walking the grounds are unbelievable. I mean, it's just such a special place. It's, it's a real privilege to be here. You know, I was here five years ago, um, 2019, with my dad, and we were sitting on, um, I believe it was, it was eight, uh, eight green, and Tiger came through. It was the year he won, but it was Saturday. And I think he made a birdie or a par on, right in front of us on eight and sitting there with my dad. And um, yeah, I'll never forget it. Greatest to ever do it. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I live in Arizona and there's a bunch of guys that are members at my course there at Whisper Rock. So I spend a lot of time with the players, you know, Max Homa, John Rahm, Tony Finau, like you name it, you know, I get a chance to play with them. Then I play in a few pro-ams. So I, I really enjoy kind of being able to, to walk and talk with them. You know, as a guy who, is trying to get better and improve their game. You know, any any suggestions or hints that you can get from is always helpful. What's the best piece of advice that one of them has given you that has made your game better? Well, just like eliminating one side of the golf course. Right now, like I'm struggling with a two-way miss, and so like being consistent. Like you see Victor Hovland or John Rahm or Wyndham Clark and even Tiger Woods this week. They just play this power cut right. They can aim down the left side, and they know it's never going to go left. That is a very reassuring way to play the game, knowing that you can only miss it one way and so trying to trying to do things like that are, are what I you know ask often about. I can't imagine doing anything as well <laughs> as those guys do it. Uh, you went to the merchandise store. You did Ooh, a I nice did. piece on that. Yeah. What was the total tally and where are you on the laundry list of what you must get for your friends, your husband, your youngins? Well okay so the best thing was that when I told Josh, my husband, the total tally, which was like 1800 which is really a lot. And we were like, goodness gracious, we're going to have to save up I mean, with it's, that. But It's relatively a lot. Here's my thing. The reason why it was a lot is because I had six bags of things. You can go in that golf shop and get so much yes. for the price. Like, it is really reasonably priced. It's for anybody who wants to go in there. I didn't realize that. And I, I went in and I was like... Oh my goodness, I could get everything. But but okay, but the funny thing was, so I called Josh and I was like, hey, <laughs> I just went in the golf shop. And but most of it's for you. <laughs> and he was like, that's awesome. The best thing too, as you know, is they ship. 
So we did that piece. I want to say we did that piece on Monday. And by the opening round on Thursday, so the first round of play, it had already arrived. It arri- The box arrived Wednesday to our house in Connecticut. So baby Jack and Josh got to put on their master's oh, polos and watch everything in the first round with their new gear. And it was just so cool. I mean, he was sending me pictures of them. He said he went around. He was, he was working that day, but he had the... The coverage loaded up, and he went around, and anybody that he came in contact with was like, "Oh, cool, man! You you got a master's <laughs> polo," and he's like, "Yeah, my wife got it shipped to me." So, it's just so cool. Uh, probably, probably Tony Romo. He's good. Uh, he's pretty good, and and John Elway was really good, and uh, you know, most quarterbacks are really good players. I, I'm the exception, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know Most why Most quarterbacks is. don't have three rings well, and, a, and a gold I'll, I'll jacket. T- I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, in your farewell address to the fans in Minnesota, it sure did look like Amen Corner was hanging behind you on the wall. That's exactly right. What's the significance of that photo? Yeah, we. Uh, that was a painting that my wife's uncle had, and he was moving out of his house, and he texted me because knew, he knew I loved Augusta, and he said, you know, would you want to have this? I said, absolutely. And so uh, when we moved into our house here in Atlanta, we had a little room that we – you know, kind of painted the walls, forest green, you know, has that grass color, and we had that painting hung up, and we have a bunch of other photos around the room from some of my golf trips, and so that kind of became my golf room, if you will, my office, and uh, and uh, it's a good place to be. It's fun to have that on the wall. What inspired you to purchase a golf course? <laughs> Great question. Uh, I think my wife still wonders that sometimes, <laughs> but uh, we joined a course uh, about an hour south of my hometown, and I would go down there, and it was the favorite thing I did all summer. We'd drive an hour, I'd play walk the course, drive back home, and I'd be gone for several hours, and I'd say to my wife, that was the best thing I'll do all summer, but I can't rationalize the hour drive there, the hour drive back. And I said, we either got to sell our house and move so I can be closer to something like that, or we could bring it to us. And so the the, the latter was an expensive notion, but uh, we're exploring it, and uh, we ended up buying the course in my home area that's about five minutes from my house. And over time, I have some dreams to be able to kind of spruce it up but uh first step was to buy the course now we're kind of sitting on it and we'll see where it goes from here oh i mean i tried every single sandwich (laughs) for being honest i couldn't wait uh the pimento was really good uh we tried the ham and cheese it's nice also uh the other one is uh pork pork belly no pork belly is not right pulled pork pulled pork yeah pulled pork is uh, so so that's a southern delicacy, twice Miguel. Twice yesterday. Twice yesterday, I swear. And obviously, one beer, you know, to have a, a, why not, enjoy a bit of the course.